Oh, well, welcome back to Geek Fang Shui. I'm your host and game master, Bob Sellers JR. Shout out to our friends at Catholic Good Brewing here in snowy Castle Manorville. It's an odd week, cold in the middle, warm on each end. It's like a hot dog of sports in the bun. <laughs> also, shout out to Under Pressure and Golden Valley and South by Southeast and beautiful Pine Island, or sexy as it may be known locally. And venues of similar nature near you and yours. Event filled calendars, Facebook pages, and websites galore. Whether it's games that they offer there, board games, card games, games of chance, trivia, and the like, Dungeons and Dragons. And of course, on Saturdays, you can limber up here in Casa Matterville and do yoga. And I could judge if you drink before, during, or after, because as we all know, yoga under the influence is not yet considered a crime in any state other than humor. As video and photo evidence is appreciated, just saying. Check out my books at sellersjr.com, my overall website, geekfangshui.com, and this channel, which we appreciate every like, subscribe, and setting a bell. Did I say like? I think I said like. Please like. And if you feel the need to comment, please feel free to do so. I'll just keep it between electrified rails. Electrified, why? Because of the troll storm that came through. I do check for comments, and if they pass the muster test, or a sniff test, and they will be posted. Otherwise, as the trolls discovered, it's garbage in, garbage out. So, I'll leave that up as a hint to like and subscribe. Always nice to. What do you have today? Super Tuesday is where everything gets reset. Have you got our Have you got a con another day? You're used to this. I must be see you later. Well, let's see where we're going. Been working on a project as I re was watching a video of why people quit playing World of Warcraft and like I kind of revisited why I finally quit the game. I think it was 12 years. I can't believe I played that game for that long, but I did. It came down to being a healer. A couple of things you have to understand in an MMO is a raid group is at minimum usually five characters typically a tank three dps and a healer you can get into larger raids they can be 20 or 40 or more and uh, most guilds will have raid teams well they'll have an a team a b team and a c team depending on how many members that they have um, back in the day there's and Trillo, which may still be used by some, and Discord, which is another program that allows you to communicate. And communication is key during a raid, particularly with the healers. Well, as I have mentioned many times, I had like 70 some characters, all max level at the time, Legion. And I had a number of healers, and I wanted to, you know, I was a member of a a guild called the Iron Horde. They may or may not still be around, I doubt it, but how I found my way into the guild was I almost uh, got their guild leader banned. Because he was sort of, I think, he'd never admit it, was botting. Before I got into the Iron Horde, if the past time a friend of mine and I would uh, ride around on Goral Crater looking for bots. They're easy to spot. They're usually mining.
how it came about is uh, it was on a PvP server, and I was Alliance and my friend was Horde, and we got bored between doing different things as will often happen when you have max level characters, and we got tired of bots. So we'd fly around, we'd board them, and we got messaged and got kind of brought into a little chat with the uh, uh, game master. And when I say I was going to say GM, um, but I didn't know it was not a guild master, a game master. And they asked us what we were we were doing, and we explained it to them. And and I I should say him the game the GM. I I don't know if it was a uh, female or not. Anyway, they uh, applauded our. Uh, plans of uh, disrupting such practices because it's been frowned on for a long time by Blizzard. Botting involves oftentimes using third-party programs to do mundane things such as farming, fishing, you name it. Well, anyway, he said, okay, here's what you need to do immediate response. So we came up with 10 steps of identifying a bot. So we're flying along. Let's say we see an alliance that looks like they're a bot. So I try to initiate a conversation with them, add them as a friend. Yeah, I forget all the 10 of them. But uh, in the end, one of them was the opposite friend would kill them and see if they got their attention. Because there are people that are, I, I watch other stuff and do other stuff, so it's conceivable. I'll give my uh, former friend benefit of the doubt, but I still say he was spotting. Anyway, uh, we must have knocked off, and I'm not tooting around long, between the two of us, about 400 guys, because that's what we do all, all day. Just go around, flying around, identify them. The funniest part is when it was obvious, because the bots can't help themselves. I think I've run into a few in Classic where you kill them, and they don't defend themselves, or they keep going. Well, many of the bots try to be surreptitious by spreading themselves out over an area, particularly on Goro Craters, a big area. And uh, with my hunter who could camouflage, is one of the skills... It was like shooting ducks because I'd shoot it. I'd kill a, a bot that came into mine, and then pretty soon he'd come back because that's what they did. They'd come back to where they left off, and I'd kill him again. Well, then another bot would come along, and uh, I'd do it to them. It wasn't a player because they kept coming back, and after a while I had like five or ten. Well, one of the, one of the things we'd add them to our friends list, respectively, and invariably, with the format of the ticket that we entered, the account would go offline probably within about a half hour, 20 minutes, and never come back. And once they're banned, they remove themselves from your friends list. So it's kind of probably that one anyway. One night, we're going along, and there's an alliance farming along, and we were on like step seven or step eight, and all of a sudden he woke up and said, what's going on? And introduced ourselves and told him what we are doing. That's what I mean. For us to get that far in the steps, he had to really be oblivious to everything that was going on around him. So anyway, I, the guild I was in at the time got away and said, hey, I hear you have a guild. And he did. Well, it turns out, in reality... You like to start guilds and be the guild master, but let other people run them. I like to say lazy guild master, but I will. And uh, so, guy and these people have been playing together for quite a while, so I was a stranger, and uh, they weren't necessarily keen on me being there. I just got that feeling from the get go. But I figured, you know, it's not unusual. It takes a while to warm up to people. We played good, and they all had their own characteristics. We chatted a lot, and I had fun with them. I made some friends within the guild. 
Well, we started raiding. And we had a couple, husband and wife. Um, wife's character was Azamari. Now, it's like true, but if you see an Azamari character, it's not necessarily her. So, bear that in mind. And uh, anyway, they played together, which was kind of cool. An older couple played side by side, which is kind of what led in later into this discussion of what happened. Well, she liked to heal and not do anything else. She was an alpha healer, literally and figuratively. So, which is fine. But so when we had five man groups and pugs, I I didn't just jump into healing. I went and uh, did research, got a heal bot. You could do pugs at looking for group, and then we got into looking for raid, so you could go pug or raid. And I spent weeks fine tuning my uh, healing abilities. So I got to know what I was doing. You know, you, when you do have a raid and a healer for a raid, you can have a tank healer or a DPS healer, typically also known as a raid healer. Uh, but you pick and choose what and who you're going to heal. And uh, there has to be a great element of communication, in particular with the healers, because there's a thing called overhealing, which happens a lot. And there's programs you can get that will tell you DPS meters, healing meters. And so you can check your own numbers. And there's all kinds of stories of people that were kicked from gills because they couldn't heal. And um, Short segue story is a guy I worked with and no longer plays WoW, but they were in a big horde guild. And uh, they had two, two, I think it was two, it was rogues? Might, no, I think it was warlocks. Anyway, um, one of them had been in the guild for quite a while and was, he was uh, equipped with uber gear. I mean, he was a raider, and but he didn't quite carry the day when they were raiding. Well, then they had a new guy come in that was basically in beggar's garb, as it were, you know, just getting into things and Which is understandable if you're just new to stuff. We all have to start somewhere. But during the raids that they would go on, the beggar had better DPS than the uh, Uber one did. And they could figure out, so they went through and looked, and it turns out this other guy studied DPS and had macros and and stuff, and and had a rot and he showed them all what he did. So they went to this other guy and said, hey, dude, you need to up your game. This is how he does it, would you mind, you know. So he was on the guy that said, no, I play it my way, he plays it his. And they said, that's fine, you're just not playing with his guild anymore. And they gave him a kick and kept the big. And of course, over time, he geared up more. Well, back to the healing thing is I, I got, I played DPS, and I even tanked on various characters some of the dungeons. Uh, tanking is a is a is a skilled position, but not as much as healing. Healing you really got to be on the ball, especially in big groups. So if your healer goes, there goes the party, so to speak. Well, anyway, first time I went with our guild in there, and there, this husband and wife sat next to each other, so they didn't need to use Ventrilo or Discord. I don't think Discord was out at that time. But uh, what came to be the problem is if you're in Discord or the other, you could call out what tank you're healing or what you know group you're healing. Because heals can sometimes take a bit to get off, as it were. Well, the first time we went in, I didn't realize she didn't like having someone other than herself and her, and her husband. So they stopped communicating other than between the two of them and left me out in the cold. And I, I was naive and didn't catch on what was going on, and I thought it was me. And so after the, the raid fell apart, and they said I needed to you know go practice or play more. 
In other words, you know, like, oh, run, run away, little girl, run away, as if what the butcher used to say in Diablo 2. And uh, so I went and I spent more weeks and months in pugs healing. And I got very good at it. And some of the people in the guild said the same thing as I did. That something fishy was going on with those two and what would happen to me. I said, you know, it's just the way. They're they're used to doing it their way and they're I'm fine. We got to another raid where they said they needed a third healer. Now remember, they said they needed a third healer. So well, good, because I've been back to some well. They tried to fool the same thing again. Only this time I had the evidence and was ready waiting for it, as were some of the members of the guild. So when it happened, they all voted to, they had, a, they had a click within the guild. And they voted to kick me from the raid. And it was just such an uproar that... Uh, it was just, it was bad. So I had several members of the guild stood up for me. And you know, we, I talked to the GM and I had him go talk to them. And and it was a situation, it was not a he said, she said, to use that terminology. I had the proof. And in the end, what the lazy GM, former friend of mine, said uh, whatever's good for the guild is good for the guild and so i left the guild and i was so i mean it had been one thing if we'd been communicating and i failed to do it but i knew that i had done everything in my power to prove what i, did. I mean i was but I, I at that point it was like the straw that broke the camel's back and i just walked away from the game they said you know it's not worth that. And that's the biggest problem with an MMO is other humans. There's all kinds of stories like that. Tiny Violin just recently made the WoW headlines because he uh, got angry with his guild and wiped him out already. Not once, but twice. And uh, he leveled up a character. He might, may or may not, and I can't speak one way or the other, but there's rumors that he bought a character and uh, wormed his way in, and he was banned because of that. Blizzard just said that he was uh, using third-party software, which is amalgamous, so to speak. So I think I do all of that. I think I got all of them. Let's see. I think there's still one more out here. First train. I must have got all of them. happens when you're talking you don't pay attention so anyway I walked away and I, I stayed away I played other games and you know I had like WoW and that was part of the problem and so I got away from I went and played Star Wars The Old Republic and I got into other games and then as you may have seen when I first started this channel I played a bunch of other games but I always wanted to come back to WoW anyway I wanted to address the elephant in the room with the healing so I made a druid healer that I'll reveal and show because I generally don't run dungeons in Diablo 4 I hate it because you have to but while I avoid them I just grind you know each their own I'm not saying it's a bad thing it's a form of play and casuals are playing as much as they look down their nose great end game raiders are not the norm they're just part of the whole structure of the player group whether they like to be told that or not
So anyway, look at the soapbox on that. But yeah, I, I'm going to try going healing. I got her leveled up. I'm going to go show how to do the looking for group. Test her out a little bit. Dungeons are fun. It's just pugs are a challenge or a healer as well as a tank. I have actually seen at least one time where a tank and a healer went off on their own and left a DPS or vice versa. The DPS went off once. It was healing and the tank and I are sitting there going, what's going on? The DPS took off and did what they were going to do and finished the dungeon on their own, which is great, but not great. It is what it is. But that's the nature of pugs. So, anyway, say hello to our friends at Cat of Good Brewing here in Castle Manorville, under pressure in Golden Valley, South by Southeast, in beautiful Pine Island. Or venues of similar family, pet, kid fun friendly venues near you. With event filled calendars, websites, uh, check them out, Facebook pages, trivia, games, music, food. And, uh, of course, on Saturdays, you can limber up and do yoga and not get judged if you drink before, during, or after. Because, as we all know, yoga under the influence is not yet considered a crime anywhere. And it is really fun to watch and particularly more enjoyable if you share video and photo evidence. Just saying. Check out my books at SellersJR.com and my over our website at GeekFangShui.com and this channel, which we really, really, really do appreciate the likes. Please like. And if you feel that you'd like to subscribe set the bell accordingly and if you want to leave comments good bad or indifferent feel free to do so as long as they're between the electrified rails and uh, not troll speak that uh, the uh, child care and daycare let them out onto their uh, little game boy pcs and to run amok with so Anyway, I do check, and uh, if you leave a comment and it passes a sniff test, it will get posted. So have a good one. Please like, subscribe, and have a great day.